Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another grinded video. Sorry, grounded video here. Uh, we're dropping the new video for the update Dev Strike Back. I mean, Bugs Strike Back. Sorry, my words mixed up today. Anyway, we're uh, going to cover everything you need to know about the new Bug Strike Back update for Grounded that just released surprisingly uh, yesterday. It's had a lot of issues uh, with people even just being able to try to jump into the PTS. A lot of uh, feedback has been given. Um, some listen to, some not, but we're just going to dive right into it. Uh, so let's do it. First things first is going to be, obviously, the uh, the title of the update is called Bug Strike Back. So we know that we have base defenses, we have uh, mixers, we have waft emitters now that we can draw bugs to us to where we can try to uh, harvest some of those more rare resources that they drop. Uh, base defense mode. So right now, it's a faction reactivity, uh, is there what they're calling it. So red ants, black ants, orb weavers... Um, all the different insects, not all of them, but a majority of the different insects, if you are in their zones too long, or if you piss them off too much, if you kill too many of them, they're going to go attack your base. Now, I literally had this happen yesterday. I was over in the sandbox getting ready to do the, uh, the black ant hill and it said base attack was, uh, going on. The base raid was happening over at my, uh, sandbox base. Nothing happened. I've got a bridge over there by the sand castle. I've got, uh, my base on the island there. I've got some stairs and everything. Nothing happened. I killed maybe two ant lions, but not a single one was actually going going again or going to attack any of my structures. So I think the base raids are still a little messed up right now. We don't know a lot about them, how they work. Other people have had uh, some sad tales of their bases being destroyed over by the Oak Lab because the Beehive. Uh, spoiler, if you haven't heard, is uh, the Beehive has been moved up to the Oak Lab now. So that seems to be a uh, bee faction area. So they've had bases decimated by bees, um, and there's really not a good way to defend against them right now, aside from some of the stuff we'll get into. Um, so that's the that's one of the things right there is the new base raid um, possibility. And then we have the waft emitter, like we said, and we're going to show some of this in the game. Uh, the waft emitter is something that, uh, let's go ahead and jump over to my other save. We'll show you guys that. All right, so here we are over here, and uh, this is the waft emitter. So this is something that you guys have. Um, if you've played for a while, you probably have a ton of extra uh, insect parts. But this is a way that they are um, allowing you to basically just have insects come to you instead of going out and hunting them. So you can put different uh, insect parts, red ant parts, and stuff like that. The more you put in, the more it's going to enrage them. So that means the more insects potentially are going to come, and the tougher the insects are, they're going to come. Uh, but that's the waft emitter. So one of the things to talk about with the base raids is you have these new items here, the pebblet turret and the uh, pollen turret over here. So the pollen turret is uh, supposed to, you shoot it at flying enemies or whatever, and it's supposed to slow them down. All insects basically supposed to slow them down. So you're going to get in here and you can uh, see that pollen is the ammo. And you know how much pollen there is in the game. There's tons, so you're never going to have an issue running out of pollen. And you can kind of go around here and then just shoot the uh, the flying insects. Same thing with the pebblet one. You're going to hop in here. It takes pebblet as your ammo. You're going to move around and be able to shoot the insects. So that's those two things. The other thing that we have now is the uh, the new mixers. So I'm going to head over there and uh, show you guys one of those. All right, so here we are over here at one of the mixers. This is the grassland mixer. There's going to be five different mixers in total that, uh, that you can get to. You have one in the upper yard that's going to be over here. There's one in the sandbox over in this location. There's one in the haze. There's uh, one over in the hedge, and I think that's it. That's five, right? By the way, so these are basically another sort of uh, base defense mechanism. They're called one of Wendell's uh, experiments. For whatever reason, he put these out here to draw insects or uh, something. So you got these going on, and basically you're going to need to um, talk to Burgle, get the biometric scanner unlocked and everything. Then you can access these. You're going to click on them. You'll see a health bar. If you've seen some of my other videos covering some of the uh, PTS as we were uh, trying it out, you're going to have a health bar and then the overdrive is going to be building up and in turn insects are going to be coming because it's noisy and it annoys them. So there's different ways to defend this. They're, they are increasing in difficulty. Uh, so the first one here, your grass, grasslands one, you're going to see some typical insects, uh, red ants, uh, some lawn mites and stuff like that. Nothing too major. And as you progress to the other mixers, you're going to have the higher tier insects and they're going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, speaking on insects, there are no new insects. Uh, that's one of the things that a lot of people are kind of frustrated with with this update. There's no new armor. There's no new weapons. There's uh, none of that. No new areas, really. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, so that's the mixers. That's all the base raid stuff that we have to talk about. Let's uh, keep going here. So now there are new collectibles, features, and crafting as well. One of the collectible things that we have here is going to be your creature cards. So you can see right here we've got a couple of them. 
They're broke down in between neutral, angry, and harmless. Harmless being your aphids, your weevils, your grubs, and gnats, and stuff like that. Neutral are going to be the ones that will only attack if you attack them. And then the angry are the, uh, the aggressive insects that if you're near them, they'll go and attack you. So you can see some of the differences here. They have added weaknesses and resistances to the uh, insects. And some of the insects will have weak spots too, weak points that you can uh, capitalize on. So like right here, the ladybug, if you go after the legs, um, you can attack them and it'll do extra damage. Now there's a caveat to that. Some of the weak points are only affected by certain types of damage. So if I'm over here with, uh, it's weak to busting. If I'm over here with a stabbing weapon, even if I'm attacking the legs, it might not work on the weak point. So you have to have a busting. You want to have the weapon that they're weak to, and you have to hit the weak point with that particular weapon. So there's little things like that that haven't really been pointed out in the uh, in the update, but that's one of the things that's going to give you the weaknesses, the resistances, weak points, uh, health, the tier of the insect, and how many of the player is killed. So pretty cool thing. Uh, there's talks of a reward for uh, completing your creature card um, database here, I guess. I don't know if that's just going to be an achievement or something like that. More than likely it will be. And then there's gold cards as well. There's no difference in the gold cards other than that they're gold. So it's just something for the uh, for the collectors out there to go after. Um, and the way that you're going to get those is by uh, peeping an insect. So we had the peeper added in the last update into the end of the wood update. So what you're going to have to do is uh, find an insect. Go ahead and hit your peeper button. You'll peep it. And what's going to happen is it's going to show a little icon with a question mark. You go ahead and uh, left click on it or whatever your, uh, your main button is. And then uh, you'll be able to peep them and get the uh, information and that uh, creature card. So pretty cool uh, that they do have that little insectopedia added in there now. I think that's something that's been long overdue, but it is in this update. So there you go. So let's go ahead and uh, keep going here. All right. So one of the other additions that's been added to the game is this uh, ASL terminal, the uh, advanced system library. And what this is, is basically everything that you were able to do with Burgle, where you had to run all the way back to the Oak Lab, whether it be quests, uh, molars, um, purchasing stuff uh, can now be accessed right here with the ASL terminal, the advanced system library. So you see here we have the science shop. This is going to show everything that you can typically buy is going to be able to be bought at any field station. Every field station is going to have these. Um, again, these are going to be unlocked once you uh, talk to Burgle and complete that first part of the uh, storyline. And uh, a little piece on the storyline. So even if you have a, a, if you're starting a new game or if you have an existing save, the complete storyline has been. Uh, kind of redone in a way so once you log in you'll see a little icon saying the story progress has been reset so all the chips that you found you'll have to go ahead and redo that again all your milk molars and everything you've bought and everything is still there but you'll just have to progress through the story again so and uh, those super chips and everything that you're going to get will have to be directly turned into burgle you can't do that here but what you can do is get some of these optional quests here so you have a chip sleuth we have this into the wood burgle chip here the uh, artificer quests are still here they're still the same thing so I've got like 500 days in this game and I still have to craft acorn chest plates. So it's still cool that you can go to the field stations now and uh, do this instead of having to go all the way back to the uh, the Oak Lab and talk to Burgle. But for the uh, main storyline quests and stuff, you still have to talk to Burgle with that. So let's go ahead and jump to the something else here. And that's going to be the uh, the new items that we do have, all two of them, which is going to be the Everchar Torch and then we have the uh, Charcoal Canteen. So the charcoal canteen, what it does is it allows you to slurp up dirty water and then be able to drink it. So you don't have to go sit there and try to find fresh water. Um, you can put clean water in here. You can still put juice. You can still put soda and everything in here, but it has durability now. So basically anytime you put a liquid in here, it's going to lower the uh, the durability of the canteen. And then the uh, Everchar torch here, now it actually um, lights brighter and it la supposedly uh, lasts longer. You can reuse it so you can repair this. I believe it's going to be two... Uh, charcoal chunks to repair this as well as two charcoal uh, chunks to repair the canteen I think it's one actually now, but we'll go ahead and check. Yeah, one one uh, cold chunk for the canteen and then two for the uh, for the uh, Torch there so really cool little things, but uh, Not game-breaking so let's go ahead and jump to the next uh, couple things here and one of the main things is now you are able to uh, name your saves your game saves. so if you have a lot of um a lot of different games uh, loaded, then you can go ahead and name them. And what we have here is we can go ahead and show this one. We can rename it. So you can go in here and, you know, main game or whatever. So if you have some with uh, some other people that you're playing with or something like that, it's a custom game, then you can go ahead and do that, rename it. So kind of cool there for people that have a lot of different um, 
a lot of different game saves. Now you don't have to sit there and try to figure out which is which. You can actually name them, which makes it a lot easier. Speaking of naming things, uh, we have had improvements in that in terms of uh, the storage capabilities that we have. So not only just an icon now for your storages, you can actually name what's in your storage too. So we're going to go ahead and run up here and show you guys that. So you've got tons of storage, right? So now I want to go up here and I can actually uh, go ahead and open it. You see right up here, you have storage chests. So now I can put uh, spider stuff in here. And now that's going to show it right here. So not only do we have the purple icon for spider, now I know that spider stuff is in there. A little cool uh, quality of life improvement right there. So nothing terrible. I think it's really cool. So let's go ahead and jump to the next one. We talked about the turrets. Uh, there is a new trap that can be crafted now. One new trap that we have, and that's going to be the explosive bird trap. So you can see the cost of it here. One spiky bird, one lint rope, and four fungal growth. Now the fungal growth, you probably shouldn't have any chance of, uh, or any difficulty in getting a bunch of that. But the lint rope is still pretty rare, and the spiky birds are still pretty rare. But what these do is, um, so when an insect gets close to them, it's going to, something spicy hits it. So you can shoot a spicy arrow, or go hit it with one of your spicy weapons, or throw a weapon at it, and it'll explode. So causing a lot of damage to the insects, I recommend not putting it anywhere near one of your bases because obviously we still have player damage that affects our structures. So that's going to be one of those things. But it does help um, if you're doing some base raids or if you're trying to do some of the mixers, it can be a little bit more difficult. So we talked about the creature cards. One of the big things here, let's get into it and go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room. We have uh, armor upgrades now. So you can see here we have level 9 sleek armor. Now there's two paths you can go down. I'll go ahead and grab some other armor here, and we'll show you guys that. Squishy now. So we got to upgrade our armor here now. We're at level zero. So you can see here, the cost of armor is going to be exponentially greater than uh, I think what it's worth. So you're going to need grub leather plates, and how you make those is you get grub leather scraps, and how you get that is you get grub uh, hides from the grubs. Now, the cost of a grub leather plate right here, you can see right here, so you're going to need literally almost 100 grub just to upgrade one piece of armor. And along with that is going to be sap and then berries. And then uh, once you get to it, it's going to be pupil leather as well. So go ahead and show you guys that in our uh, craftable items here. So pupil leather plates is going to require pupil leather scraps, bug loop, and berry leather plates. Pupil leather scrap is just pupil leather. Berry leather plates is going to require berry leather scraps, bug rubber, and grub leather plates. Bug or berry leather scraps is just going to require your berry leather. Uh, grub leather scraps is your grub hides here. Now, grub, hi grub hides do drop more often from the grubs, and they said that they've placed a lot more grubs in the game, so it's not going to be too difficult to get a lot. The fact is you're going to have to grind to get a lot of that stuff and get the armor up to a position to where it was similar to the armor prior to the update. And your grub leather plates here, so we talked about sap being one of your main components too. You're going to definitely want to have an area where you can collect a ton of sap all at one point. I recommend um, going over to the fallen log or somewhere in the hedge and just laying down a ton of sap catchers to where that way you can just go over there one time and maybe collect up to 100 sap because it's going to take a lot. And then obviously your crude rope here and then grub leather scraps. So the armor upgrades is something cool. Um, you can get these uh, innate abilities on some of your armors here. And we have that with our, uh, with our Koi armor here. We can go ahead and show you guys that. So the Koi scale armor is going to actually allow perfect block and parry stun. And then you have a innate ability that is uh, unlocked as well. So we can see that over here. Now we have the perfect block, extends perfect block window and parry stun. So perfect blocking attack temporarily increases the stun damage you deal. And obviously that's gonna lead to stunning the insects. So pretty cool stuff. All the different armor, once you get up to uh, level six, I believe, or level eight, nine, I don't remember which one, but you'll be able to unlock some of those things. And you can see that we have sleek all the way. The defense is at three and a half here. It's what, uh, five and a half there, and then three and a half on the, uh, the grease as well. So cool stuff. And you can either go down the sleek or bulky path. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the bulky path is going to increase your damage, uh, or your defense rather, a lot more than the sleek path. But that bulky path won't have the innate ability that you unlock with the sleek path. So cool thing. Get in there, try it out. Uh, I recommend testing some stuff out first. Maybe checking to see which, uh, innate abilities you might want to go down if you choose the sleek path or if you want just straight defense then obviously go the bulky path um so the weight class has actually been reworked as well <clears throat> excuse me so there are penalties for heavier armors now that you still have the armor of being heavy medium and light armor so how that works is light armor is going to have a 10 percent damage reduction and it's only going to cost five percent more stamina to attack 
Medium is going to be 20% damage reduction and a 15% more stamina cost to attack. And if you're rocking the heavy armor, it's actually going to cost more stamina to attack with 30% uh, damage reduction and 25% more stamina to, to, uh, to attack. On top of the armor upgrades now, we do have a new item here. It's called a glue factory. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to be able to throw different insect parts in here to craft repair glue. Now, you have black ox parts, spider chunks, roly-poly, termite, antlion, stink bug, ladybug, and bombardier parts. So whatever you have a ton of extra resources uh, for, you can go ahead and throw them in here and craft your repair glue. The repair glue is going to work on all of your higher level weapons and armor. So if we have these, we can go ahead and go bam, repair, and it's only going to cost one repair glue. The lower tier, um, lower level armor and weapons that you have are still going to require... Um, the same things it would cost before to upgrade. Let's see if we have some uh, some lower level weapons in here. All right, so it's going to be levels one through five. You'll still need your uh, typical stuff to repair. So we have a spider fang dagger here. It's going to still require the quartzite, the spider chunk, and the spider venom. And then once you hit level six, that's when it's going to require the repair glue. So not too bad. It's a really uh, efficient and cheap way to uh, craft repair glue or to repair your weapons and armor, basically. So now you can just have these around, and it's going to save up some of the inventory slots instead of carrying all the uh, the insect parts to repair. So now you can basically repair on the go just by carrying a stack of these with you. One of the other things they have now is that you can uh, change your some of the settings in a game that you have. So we'll go over here. We'll go to uh, Options, actually. Go to Custom Game Settings, and you can see this is a this is not a custom game. I can change the difficulty, so if I'm having a particularly hard time uh, with an insect or a fight or something like that or an area, or if it, I feel it's too easy, I can go ahead and change the difficulty to uh, to scale that. And you can see right here, some options cannot be changed in-game. So you can see right here, all recipes, bug spawns, all this stuff can't be changed, but you can change your difficulty, which is pretty nice. Uh, we talked about the ASL terminals, we talked about save game naming, we talked about storage naming. So some of the changes they made to the bugs is uh, that now that they can jump across and jump up things, there's still the possibility for cheese. You can still stand on the thing, and a lot of times the insect will try to jump and it won't make it up there. So you're still going to be able to use your uh, your bow and arrow method to uh, kill some of the insects. Um, there is a take all feature added on the sap collectors now, so you don't have to sit there and pick them out one at a time. And that's going to help when you're grinding to get a ton of sap and a ton of uh, grub hides to go ahead and uh, make that a little bit quicker. Uh, we talked about the charcoal canteen and the charcoal torch. We talked about the story quests and changes. A lot of the other changes are uh, uh, little in terms of um, what they actually bring, but this is mainly a quality of life update. So they've tried to introduce a lot of little things into this update. Um, little things like uh, increased milk molar HP upgrade values. Lint rope now only costs two lint to craft. The uh, player will respawn at nearest discovered field station if no respawn point is set. The billy hogs and apples now drop um, rotten food for some reason. I guess we're using a ton of the rot rotten food. There's a minor stamina rework. So now if you exhaust all your stamina, you'll run out. You'll have basically a three second delay for your stamina to uh, replenish, which is something different. And then one of the other things they've added too is that uh, all weapons um, stamina usage has been reduced by half. So if you're using a big weapon, a little weapon, and however how much stamina it used to cost, that's been cut in half. So that's pretty nice. You'll be able to get off more attacks, um, which you're going to need because some of the bugs have been, uh, their damage resistance has been increased. So it's going to take a little bit longer to kill the bugs. And it's taken forever for my stamina to uh, get down here. But so yeah, it seems a lot like the uh, the players themselves have been nerfed with the, the armor upgrades and the insects seem to do more damage and take a lot more of a of a hit too so now you can see our stamina burns out we've got a three second delay and you're not going to be able to do anything when your stamina is running out you have to wait until it recharges uh, mutations there are some mutation changes here uh, in particular little fist and mithridatism so mithridatism no longer grants you 100 percent poison immunity stage one you it'll require you to kill one wolf spider and that's going to grant a 25 percent poison immunity Stage two is to kill five and grants you 50%. And then stage three is going to be kill 10 and it only grants a 75% poison immunity. Now that's important because especially with the broodmother and some of the wolf spiders, you're not going to be able to uh, 
resist their poison 100%. So basically making them more effective when you're fighting them. And then we can talk about the infected wolf spider too. So if you take a hit, you're automatically getting that poison damage. So it's no longer going to be 100% resistant. It's 25, 50, and 75%. And along with poison damage, Orb Weaver Juniors now deal poison damage on one of their attacks when they rear back their legs and lunge at you. That's going to hit you with poison as well. Uh, the other one, Little Fist, is going to be... Uh, so stage one, you have to kill 40 creatures with fists, and the effect is going to be a 25% chance on hit to gain a damage up buff for unarmed attacks. Stacks an unlimited amount of times. Stage two is kill 100, and you're going to have a 50% uh, chance to gain that damage up buff. And then stage three is going to be kill 200 insects, and then grants you a 75% chance for the uh, buffed up damage for unarmed attacks. So don't know why those were necessary. We do, we still have a lot of mutations that I think can be reworked. So hopefully in a future update, but uh, that's not for this update. That's for a future one. So don't let's keep it going here. Lift. Some of the other things, uh, movement, zip line speed has been increased. Um, there's a new combat music track. Uh, a lot of the other stuff you guys will be able to just check out on the uh, the update notes. Is go to grounded.obsidian.net uh, and you'll be able to uh, check all the other stuff um, with pets and uh, little UI changes, building changes, and uh, stuff like that. So that's basically it for everything that you need to know. Like I said, a lot of the other stuff is just little things that I'm not going to cover in this video. Otherwise, it'd be an hour long. So get out there and uh, go ahead and enjoy the Dev Stri sorry Bugs Strike Back update. I think you guys will definitely enjoy it. Um, we'll see if this holds us over for another few months before we get the next update. But uh, that's all we got for this video, guys. So thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to all my uh, channel members right now. Thank you so much for uh, staying a member and helping us create this grounded content. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you join the community. Uh, link to the join the Discord will be in the description. We talk about all things uh, Grounded, the new update. We're talking about the story mode, everything that we like and dislike about the game in general. So look out for that. And uh, with that being said, take care of yourself, everybody. Take care of each other. And as always, stay original, my friends. We'll see you in the next video. Later.